minute here to talk a little bit about Kevin's Vikings, uh, who are just tearing up the NFL with a 5-0 and record. Who would ever have thought? Who would ever thought if you had uh, Minnesota here at 5-0 and uh, this year? Uh, you look at what has transpired um, with this offense. You look at the offense of uh, Teddy Bridgewater, uh, quarterback, um, promising second year for, for these Vikings. You look at then Adrian Peterson coming back, um, uh, being able to be under, under uh, to take that ball and take some of that pressure from Teddy Bridgewater. But you look at those two key injuries they had, that of Teddy Bridgewater in practice, it was mind-blowing what the result of that well, defense and that was could be, shocked. That could be something that might end uh, a career. It could be a career ending, uh, basically on just his stature, how Teddy Bridgewater is really not a very big boned quarterback. Uh, he is kind of skinny in the legs a little bit. And so that fracture can be, you know, something pretty serious uh, with an ending of a career. Possibly. We don't know. But but it was pretty gruesome in any case. It was pretty gruesome. Yeah. It, it, it had the defense down on, on, on their knees. Uh, yeah. They were taking it very, very hard because of the promise that they had from last season to this season of what they were able to do in the NFC North. And then you look at then an Adrian Peterson, losing Adrian Peterson to, to an injury as well. This is guy, remember, when he had a, uh, you know, the ACL, MCL, uh, torn in the knee, they had to do the surgery. He came back the next year. They couldn't believe this guy was yeah. breaking records. Yep. Uh, it was just dumbfounded on how he was able to perform. He comes back. He was out of the league for a little bit due to some issues that he had with the sure. NFL um, and a, some suspension. But he comes back. You have a promise to say, hey, we finally have Adrian Peterson under, uh, under, in a running back situation for our offense. So you look at that, those two losses, you start to wonder, wow, where does this team go from here? Uh, Mike Zimmer, of course, of course, you know, a uh, coach who once was a defensive coordinator in Dallas, yep. uh, now a head coach for Minnesota. Yeah. He brings a grit with him, a defensive mind. Case in point, that's why you see that defense playing so well. Excellent defense. I mean, you're looking at it, just a monster defense all around. These guys are big, they're fast, uh, they're young. young. I mean, you've youth. got Barr. I mean, Kendricks. You, you've got a, a really great future on the, on the defense that there. That front four with Everson Griffin, you have then uh, uh, Kendricks, you got your linebacker set. Uh, you, you have these type of players that like to rush and they like to be physical. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's so key for a defense like this in the NFC North. Because you're playing the Green Bay, well, you're playing it, the Chicago. And it is a Mike Zimmer design. I mean, he, he's got his uh, thumbprint all over this thing. I mean, this is really, uh, right. uh, you can credit a lot of that to, uh, to, the, to the coach and the front office staff trying to put this thing together. Right, you could. And, and you, you look at uh, what they, Spielman, actually, uh, Chris Spielman sure. with, with their front office, what he's been able to do with all the draft picks, with putting and assembling a good defense, coming now on the on the on the on the aspect of losing Teddy Bridgewater, now losing Adrian Peterson, you got to think about it. That defense is looking at themselves, going, "We now have to play better." Well, and, and we with the season that. that they had last year, and now going into this season, you're looking at a team that uh, they they're not about to 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 make any bones about it. They want to make the playoffs. And so then they pull off a, a blockbuster deal, really, in, in a small blockbuster, but a blockbuster nonetheless, to get their quarterback in Sam Bradford <laughs> from the Philadelphia Eagles. Who, who would ever have thought? I mean, you think about that acquisition. If you had to say, okay, Kevin, how many quarterbacks, if you had a, a four quarterbacks labeled, would you ever think that it would be a Sam Bradford coming in? Well, I would have even maybe looked at Matt Castle. I mean, sure. you look at, there's a lot of different options that you know a lot of different options they could look at you know but you're looking at sam bradford you know promising had some injuries early on in his career some a lot of a lot of uh issues that he had sure. coming uh in, especially with the eagles i mean he just wasn't happy there let's just make he, he wasn't make and that. i think a lot of that has to do with you think about a, again we, we've talked about a couple of times on the show about a player coach and in, in, in relationship that offensive coordinator has a special relationship with that quarterback mm -hmm. and you think about when you talk about having an offense and a playbook being able to open that playbook and offense to that quarterback is so key. And so you look at somebody, if you, if you had to say, okay, good or bad decision with Sam Bradford, well, obviously we're seeing what a good decision. They're Great decision, and but they gave up a first rounder and a fourth rounder for it. I mean, a first round pick for Sam Bradford, I mean, that's pretty. That was taking a big risk. That's a huge risk. <laughs> huge I risk. Mean, a big risk uh, because you're looking at it like, okay, what could we have got? 
forward, a player, rather than Sam Bradford? What could we be brought into our our, our team? Well, and Carson Wentz an then coming into Philly. There you go. And you know that, uh, you know, at that point, Sam Bradford is probably expendable. Um, but they still ended up giving up a first rounder and a fourth for uh, what some might have thought, well, maybe a fourth rounder would be enough. Right. You know, going back to Sam Bradford, I think the thing is, is that you look at a 6'4", 225-pounder, good frame. Yeah. Uh, he's 28, so he still has a lot of time in his career. Uh, there has been some severe injuries earlier in his career when he played for, you know, the Rams sure. uh, for St. Louis. So you look at what he's doing. Uh, he's able to make, uh, when you see about how he, his, seven, his completion percentage is at 70%. Mm -hmm. he's, he's had uh, good games against Carolina. Uh, on the road, sure. Um, they've been able Excellent. to perform two touchdowns in some of those games. He's not a rushing quarterback. No. Okay, so he's not a rushing quarterback. But then you've but, got some weapons, and you've got an offensive line that is doing their job. I mean, that's uh, critical to, especially when you have quarterbacks that have been hurt in the past, and you're tr doing your best to try to protect that quarterback right. from getting hurt in the future. I mean, right. that offensive line is just critical. For, for what the Vikings are doing. Now, I think the thing is we'll look at, you know, they're 5-0. and And we look at it and see, like, okay, where do they go from here? After the, after the bye week, that schedule gets a little bit more interesting. They got to play Green Bay twice. They got to play Dallas uh, in an yeah. in, in in a interesting game, which, which, which that will be. Because, again, you're for talking sure. about a possible good Dallas team could be in maybe one loss. Yeah, could uh, be. Could I mean, be. you're looking at that schedule. Um, it's uh, not exactly cupcakes, but you're looking at uh, potential wins there uh, all the way up until you get to the Vikings, and that might be the stiffest challenge right. uh, to that point. And so the NFC North is a lot of people jockeying, but again, we have Minnesota up on top. And then you have to go to Detroit. You have to go to a lot of these other, other places. But I think the thing is, though, look, I have to go back to defense Why? Because defense wins championships. Oh, you they, can look at the last few Super Bowls and know that. I mean, it's it, you have to have some kind of at least a decent defense in order to make it even make it that far. Right, and this is a defense that actually is holding teams twelve point six points, allowing that's only. So you're talking about a young team, and that's against uh, a passing in a in a passing league where you're expecting to, to put up uh, quite a few uh, points in, in, in the NFL. Look what they've done. They, they played Green Bay. They played Carolina. They played New, New York, uh, the New York Giants. Uh, so, again, it, it hasn't been an easy road, especially when you're losing to Ted, Teddy Bridgewater and Adrian Peterson. But now a lot goes on this defense having to, to perform. I thought what was interesting, though, too, is that this is a defense that's running a A-gap blitz. Now, think about that. When you talk about an A-gap blitz, right, you're talking about linebackers that are able to be key on the offensive line from the center to the guard, having them key in on those gaps. And they sit there in those gaps waiting for what is the quarterback going to do. So they can either come in to those gaps and shut down what's in there, maybe a run, perhaps even a quarterback making some kind of other decision. But again, that A-gap blitz, a lot of teams are running that A-gap blitz. And this is what's been successful for Minnesota is having that A-gap blitz they have their front four. They have the, they have some thick, big bodies in there, but then they have some very versatile linebackers. And so that's what. And then you you look at that, and you look at also the the cornerbacks, uh, Trey Waynes. You mm -hmm. look at sure. uh, Terrence Newman. Uh, some of these cornerbacks, they're able to be physical uh, with the with with the, those receivers and with those offenses that they face. So to me, D, this defense key is going to be health. Mm -hmm. The key is going to be health. This is with any team going to be the health and what are they able to do uh i did see that the the next game that they do play against the eagles they are playing the eagles next uh should be an interesting Carson match Lynch. yes it, it will should be because he's playing so well that offensive line we just talked about earlier um that should be an interesting matchup it will be i i have i ha i'm leaning towards minnesota just because i think that defense again allowing 12.6 points allowed mm -hmm. that's a good defense and and the thing is can they be consistent we'll see but you have also, I thought was interesting, two Kendricks brothers. Uh, you have Michael Kendricks, uh, of course, yeah. playing for Philly, and you have Eric Kendricks, you know, here with Minnesota. So you've got brothers against brothers sure. playing. But I, I think the thing is that we see is it should be an interesting game. Uh, I see that Trey Waynes may not be able to play and go. Uh, Terrence Newman uh, may be the, the, the same thing here. But we shall see. 
again, again, health sure. comes into play. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. I have Minnesota really winning that game. Um, I think that they'll be able to prove that they, their defense will be able to come up big. Mm-hmm. And I think, again, it's against Sam Bradford's. He has not thrown a pick so far. And so we'll see how that works out uh, as they play each other uh, on, coming up. This has been The Fat Show. Uh, I'm D. I'm Kevin. And uh, we'll see you next time. Next time.